All right, and uh, welcome to another video on using Logger Pro in the physics classroom. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at how to handle um, the situation when we find our data does not fit a linear pattern. And so we have to go through the process of what we call linearizing it, which essentially is manipulating the data and then replotting the graph uh, to, to show the relationship between the variables and to obtain a linear graph. So here we see we have data that's already been entered earlier. This data may have been entered manually, or perhaps it was collected by a probe, but at either case, we see that the data uh, shows a pattern that does not look linear. Uh, again, if I were to put this regression line on here, we can see that uh, we have a decent correlation of 0.9888, but that in the beginning, the lower data points, lower links, tend to lie below the line. The longer links tend to lie above the line of best fit, and the intermediate lines tend to lie above it. So that makes it look like we have a curve here. And in fact, a curve like this uh, could be a root curve or a square root curve, uh, sometimes also called a side opening parabola. Um, that looks like it's the best possibility, and so we will check for that. Now, with that particular curve, we would say that the period squared was proportional to the length. And so we would square the values for the period that are right here in the data column and plot period squared versus length. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and move this graph over and move it down a bit. Uh, we don't need it for right now. I'm going to click on my data set and I'm going to expand it. See if I can drag that over there. There we go, get that little handle. Drag it over so I have some room. And now um, I want to create a new column that's going to have the period squared values in it. And the way I do that is I go up to the data menu and choose new calculated column. Notice if I put a manual column, I'll have to square it manually. So I'm going to go with the calculated column. I get this dialog box that um, looks similar to the dialog box I got for the column options, but uh, it's different in the fact that it has this text box down here that's for creating an equation, which we'll do in just a second. Since I'm planning to square the periods, the name of this column should not be calculated column. There should be something like period squared, and I could type in squared. If I wanted to, there's no problem with that, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to type in period, and I'm going to use this drop-down menu that has Greek letters and subscripts and superscripts. I will choose a superscript of two, and you'll see that it says period, and it's got the little two up there for squared. Then for the short name, remember that T, capital T, is the abbreviation for period, and I will cho choose a subscript there as well superscript, I should say. If I tab over the units, the units for period are seconds. So I type in the S and then use a superscript 2 as well. So now it's labeled period squared or T squared and the units are second squared. I then click down in the equation bar or the text box. Now this is not like a spreadsheet where I would start an equation with an equal sign or something like that. It's only the right half of the equation after the equal sign. The way I would do this to square period is I would go to the variables menu and I choose period. It enters it like that. And then to square it, I'm going to use the little caret, which is the symbol above the six, so shift six. That's how I raise some variable to a power. And then I type in two because that's the power I want it raised to. When finished, I click done. Now, the only change that you notice is that I now have that new calculated column that has the square of periods. This graph didn't change at all. But if I want to see what it looks like when I square the period, I can put my cursor above the symbol for period and notice it changes. And that indicates that this is a menu. If I click once, let's see if I can get rid of that thing. If I click once, I can choose period squared. And now I've got a graph 
Let me resize this a little bit. Now I got a graph that looks pretty linear. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the insert menu and choose graph because and change period squared on this one back to period. Now again, remember that when I have a graph that uh, looks like the data is doesn't fit very well, I go click on the auto scale button and then I tweak this a little bit maybe resize them both just a bit. I'm, I'm thinking ahead to printing here. I don't want them to overlap. But I, so I have my raw graph that has that curve to it and then I have this graph that looks very linear. If I click the regression button I see that it fits very nicely. I'm going to double click on this and click on appearance and then I change the font size to 14 so you can see it a little bit better say OK. And you can see now that I have my slope and intercept and a correlation of 0.9996. Now you might recall, if I go back over here and click on this one, that the correlation value on this was 0.9888, which you might be tempted to think is a good fit, but clearly it's not as good a fit as 0.9996. So I get rid of that because it's not a linear graph. I don't want to align the best fit. And over here I have my linear graph and it shows uh, a correlation of 0.9996, so that's that's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And uh, a slope of 0.48, and I might be tempted to call that 0.487 seconds squared per meter, and an intercept of 4.99 square seconds. Um, at this point, uh, it looks like I have both graphs that I would need. And um, although my title on this graph is wrong, because if you recall, I switched from period to period squared, so I'll just go up here and by period I'll go ahead and put in that superscript. So it's period squared versus length and I'll give this one a title, just period versus length. And I'm good. Um, one other hint for this before I close. On your raw graph, notice that the circles that protect the points are red and they're not filled in. Um, this can cause a problem on some printers, especially the one in my classroom, in that it's a black and white printer and the red doesn't show up very well. So I'd like to change that so that it's something I can see better. Now since these points are red, if you look in the data set, you'll see that the period column is in red. So I'm going to double click on that. I get the column options again. But now I'm going to go click on the options tab. Here I can change the color from red to whatever I want. Maybe black. Pretty boring. And an empty circle to a filled circle. Or maybe a filled triangle. Or maybe a diamond. Whatever, whatever you'd like. Click done. And notice now that those points are uh, going to be a lot more visible to the printer.